welcome, 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 welcome. I was going to do 50 because of the Nifty 50 podcast of the Optic Podcast. 50 episode, Nick. Wow. How many uh, 50 episodes in what, two years? <laughs> two years. There's, and it's <laughs> once a week. It's once a week, so 52 weeks in a, in a year, three years. That's pretty good. Skip every week other? here. Every yeah. other. I guess it's not too bad. All right, so introductions. We have Zai from Sweden who is out of Texas now. Yeah, uh, staying at the Emerson, so. Staying at the Emerson, don't visit. Uh, Nick, trucker hat, America. <laughs> I didn't go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. No, you can't. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, it I'm doesn't ready. matter. They can, you literally find it when you, like, map quest. What else is there? Yeah, around yeah. here like there's not good that many question we got, we got the frisco i'm square trying to find street. out yeah we have frisco square that's down the wait why'd you say it like that huh why'd you say it? so this is ppd peter dagger right yeah right Killed from him. uh indiana by way of la from indiana wait, where, was the last, where, where did you I recite live, last i live in denver right now denver Colorado. <laughs> i get the look now um, Thanks. We'll talk about legalization. <laughs> it's an, it's an <laughs> shirt, everybody. We'll, we'll talk about legalization and all that in a little bit. I'm kidding. Um, all right. So, <laughs> why'd you say it like that? Because he's like, he's like, this Frisco Square. Well, I've been working on my southern accent, and because I'm from Indiana, I feel like I can get away with it sometimes. Yeah, 100. percent I can't. I can't. Even I just... though Indiana's not southern, but it's kind of like Midwest. So no, it's southern to Chicago, so it's definitely the south. <sighs> Chicagoans or people from Illinois consider that the south. Really? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. That's just like middle. It's like... I mean, when I go to Chicago from Indiana, I drive west. You drive upwards, though. Maybe. Wait, what part of Indiana? I'm from Fort Wayne, so that's northeast Indiana. Yeah, but it's, it doesn't supersede how high on the map. All right, so Indiana is south of Chicago. It's fine. It's not a big okay. deal. It's not no, a big deal. <laughs> it's like I was going to do longitudes and... Either way, neither of it's south. <laughs> there you go. I'm not sure you're prepared for that conversation, but... What'd you say? Platitudes. Uh... You get the joke? It's like saying I'm really. I actually I know where, don't, but it's like it's like saying I'm really, I'm really, I'm really good. Uh, I, I know where every state in the world or every state is. I'm really good at geometry instead of geography. Okay. Get it? It's called yeah. Rickyisms. It's a thing. Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> I don't watch TV shows. I, 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 welcome to it. the Optic Podcast. Yeah, I, I've seen some Trailer Park Boys, but I haven't watched it. You know, show to show. I I've have. I love it. it. Do you watch? Uh, what's? Do you watch Trailer Park? Have you heard of it? I've seen YouTube clips. Yeah, yeah but that's about it. That show's hilarious. Yeah. It is hilarious. Bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the guy with the glasses. Yeah. Yes. Ricky, yeah. Like, hey, Ricky is my guy. <laughs> that that's a fun fact. That is Seth, uh, Scrumpy Abner's, and my favorite character of all time. It's just really funny. What, what Bubbles? Uh, yeah, bubbles. Of course, that's Seth. Well, one, the dude's kind of redheadish. He loves cats. Seth loves cats. Do you have any pets? No. Do you, Nick? You you have you you're a cat guy too. Kind of, sort of. My mom was a cat woman. Like she she fost okay she fosters uh <laughs> she she fosters cats. It started it would start out as like five. Like, she'd foster, like, five kittens, and then it turned into, like, 10, then 20. Now she probably has, like, 30 cats. So, so I, was, I was around you, cats a the lot. The terminology you know. used for that is cat woman? I guess, I yeah. would go with crazy cat lady. Or crazy cat lady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy cat. No, I crazy cat. Mama. Crazy cat lady is, I've heard that. <laughs> I mean, that seems fair. 30 cats. Yeah, like, nah, she calls herself crazy cat lady. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, I have... But six. that's my mama. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> I have six. I have six dogs, as everybody knows. Um, six dogs. Huh? Six dogs. I can't say seven because there's All an ordinance. All shapes and sizes. Why not five? Uh, we so we have seven seven dogs live in my house right now because uh, Judith's mom, my mother-in-law, is waiting to move into her house. That's when one of the dogs goes away, and then we're. Did, did you rescue them? No, we, we no. It's it's crazy. Um, oh. You thought he'd rescue? Judith, uh, and, and this, this is a fact. I, He's spending okay, 10 k We'll ask you, and then I'll go into my into my reasoning. Do you have any pets? No. Back in Sweden, you? Back in Indiana? I, mean, I had pets Cows. coming up, but like we can't have Chickens. pets. Chickens? Because like, we travel so much. Chickens. Yeah. I never had any. Really. No? Your no. parents? No, nobody in your family had? No. Never had any. Do you, do, do you have any pets? I have four cats. Four cats. Crazy cat dude. Um, what in God's... What's going on? I here? don't like cats, personally. Mama Kirshner, I'm sorry. I, I just don't like cats. You know, pure. Why? I don't know. They're chill. And that, just not my thing. The reason that I have seven dogs, or six dogs, is because 
We had two originally, Animal and Schofield. Animal was the reason that Jude and I started dating. Like, I've known Jude for, like, my, my wife. I've known her for, like, 30 years. Uh, but we didn't start dating until we were older, like, 21. And, you know, he was like, she's like, I'm looking for a dog. And I'm like, oh, shit, my my uh, my aunt just had a, well, not my aunt, but her dog had a litter. It's a, it's a puppy wingman situation. Yeah, so I brought, I, I brought him in. Classy. And then, Good play. Yeah. So when he passed away, my best friend in the world, Schofield, is my best friend in the world, <coughs> period. Um, he started acting weird, right? So he started, he would, he, he would start walking backwards into a corner. And I have it on, 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 on video because it was weird. We, we were asking, and he started to have mental problems, right? Literal mental problems. And then we got another dog that looked exactly like Animal. His name's uh, Oliver. He has the same birthday as my daughter. He is... He's got 14 million vine loops on, on vine. He's famous. He's a famous dog. Look it up. It's because he had like one viral clip, right? Yeah. But he, everybody saw it. Everyone saw it. Are you his agent? I am his agent, yes. What so, was it of? The, uh, the he, he, uh, he turned the corner and ran into a mirror, and then he like flipped over backwards, and then he gets up, looks himself at a mirror, and then like, takes off and he's like a little tiny little puppy but everybody's like uh how i'm dealing with life right now or my life right now and you know you run into it and, and yeah. anyway um but still my best friend schofield kept on walking backwards into uh in, into the wall and i'm talking <coughs> into a corner like shivering and and, and like scream like not screaming but like a little bit of a squeal and we're like we can't find what's wrong we took him to the vet we can't find what's wrong with him so judith my wife being the, the great woman that she has started doing research and then she's like um He's having psychological problems because he's not part of a pack anymore. And then she's like, but two dogs don't make a pack. Three dogs make a pack. A pack. So we got Basher, named after my... my uh, Your shirt here. Yeah, my shirt. My, my, my fishing clothing line, streetwear. Bashers.com. Two S's. Um, and then, no bullshit, magically, all his problems go away. All of them. Psychologically, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's still with us to this day. Uh... And then the rest is just Jude wanting more fucking dogs. Damn, that's crazy. But he did psychological problems. Like, that happens. Animals, man. I had a cat who would pull its hair out, you know? It would, like, reach back with its teeth and just rip all its hair out. Like, on, the, on its back? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was mental problems. I don't know. No, it is. <laughs> we, got him, we got him the cone, you know? So yeah. He tried to stop doing it, but wasn't a big fan of the cone. So eventually we just said, fuck it, and just let him pull his hair out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he won't have any to pull out of it at some point. Yeah, so he I'm, ran out. I don't want to have pets. Because, I, I mean, I never felt like I needed the... I mean, I don't know why people have pets, right? Because I never had one. You yeah. Know? I, don't, I don't have the... Like, uh, I don't feel the need for whatever the pet provides. It's for people who haven't You're been not lonely. enough as a child. It's for yeah. people who have feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the, just thinking of cold, them over there with four cats. The cold, dead Swedish heart. <laughs> He just sits at home with his cat while he's no, sitting there. Ask Peter. They're no all fish. Like, <laughs> my sister had a uh, what are they called? Goldfish. No, like one of those things that runs on a wheel. Hamster. Uh, hamster. Rat. Gerbil. Except, except it wasn't a hamster. It's like this like, slightly larger version of a hamster. Raccoon. No. Guinea pig. I don't know what they're called in English, but parrots. What are they called in Swedish? Prairie dog. Uh, mosh fin. Prairie dog. Mosh fin. Mosh fin. Mosh fin. Uh, but. Name that to the popular mosh pit dance from the 90s. But I think she just like eventually got bored of it, and then in two years it ended up dying or something. And that was like the end of pets in our family. She got bored of it? Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's just this one thing. Yeah. Sits in oh, the me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I forgot it. I, I was thinking it was a real pet for a second. So you know what she needs? She needs what I have in my desk at home. It's a self-sustainable ecosystem. Are you familiar? Is that where you grow marijuana? No, that's uh, what is that called? <laughs> What's that called? No, it's it is. It's a self-sustainable ecosystem. It's pretty much a a globe, which you don't water, you don't you don't touch. You just let it be. In it, it's uh, it's 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 self-sustainable. So you you don't touch it at all. So there, at the bottom, there's like these little pebbles that act like dirt. There is a plant in there that creates algae. There is like fifty percent air. And then there are four shrimp in there, okay? And they are supposed to last for as long as they live, so seven years, more, without you touching it. Because, you know, the symbiotic relationship between all these elements inside of this thing, like, it's, it's, it's supposed to represent Earth, in a sense. So how close to alien art would you say that is? 
How close to alien art is that? It, uh, the, the, the bigger question, PPD, glad you asked, is what if somebody, what if we are somebody, where's, what if we're sitting on somebody's desk <coughs> as a self-sustainable ecosystem? Because we are. And from afar, they're looking at a self-destruct become a literal cancer on the planet by destroying and overpopulating it by having more than one kid. We're just little scrimps. We're little yeah. scrimps. That really does back up your simulation theory. It really does. Nick, do you believe in that life's a simulation? <clears throat> uh, have you ever experienced something that made you say that? <clears throat> I'm sure I have, because I'm sure if you... Have you ever felt like the puppet? What do you... Like, I'm being like kind of... Yeah. Like you're on strings? Uh... I mean, I'm sure I have. I'm sure there's been some situations, but off the top of my head, I can't really think of something. More of your own. But man. yeah, I, <laughs> same, same. I control this. Same. But at the end, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know what the hell is going on. What do we really know? Nothing. Like I was, I was reading something <clears throat> that said that we don't. Obviously, the it, it's a theory that we only use 10 percent of the capacity of our of our brain power. I think right. that's so that, a is that Einstein? myth. Who was that? Is it? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't I'm pretty sure that's like uh, It like... may have been Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> who, who also said you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Michael Scott. I'm pretty sure that's a myth, by the way. What? That we only use 10% of our brain. How could you prove it? <laughs> like they tested it. And He's it's like you actually use most of your brain. Yeah, well, okay. All right, we're going to put the sources in it's the It's like one of those, like, the myth Guy, debunked. Sources in the story. You're taking notes, you put this, this is your job. It's like one of those myths debunked type of thing. I could be totally making this up. I'm not sure. I maybe there's, you are. Maybe I there's I a Mythbusters episode. Uh, yeah, I think you heard about it, too? Yeah, the fact that it's debunked. Yeah. That it's debunked. So, okay. But when they test in many different, like, questions of different categories, whether it's creative, whether it's uh, memory or knowledge or create you know creativity when you when you measure that there's only activity in, a, in 10 percent of the brain i feel like a lot of it is just set maybe up for, or you could have made just made that up i feel like a lot of it's just set up for like fiction though i feel like there's so many plots for isn't like the there's this one scarlett johansson movie mm -hmm. where she's like some superhero or something yes and that's like the i know which one the she thing is. is she unlocks like a or and then she turns into a computer no, at the end. You know, she yeah. unlocks like more percent of her brain, yeah, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's powerful. like a the plot to a lot of. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that the movie. limitless thing too? Yeah. That's also yeah, the I limitless. Think. In this one, uh, Morgan Freeman is narrating what it, you know, what what a human brain does at certain levels. If you unlock twenty five percent at that point, you are able to move objects without interacting physically with them. If you unlock thirty to fifty percent, you are able to communicate with other people telepathically. If you unlock the whole thing, then the world's the limit. Goals, <clears> man. Goals. Yeah. Um, do you think that, um, like, no, no, going back to the, to the simulation thing and the brain thing, the one thing that, one, that that's for sure that I know about, about the brain that's, like, been the coolest fact that I've ever heard is that the brain named itself. That makes total sense, right? Yeah. I mean, words, one are, brain, words are just words, man. One brain named itself, and then the rest of the brains agreed with it. Wow. And just associated that name with it. That's some collective thought stuff right there. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I'm mind blown. Yeah, that's literally, I'm brain blown. Yeah, because somebody told you you were. Ooh. Now I'm totally just <laughs> mentally. Yeah, we should change the subject. Man. Let's <laughs> well, so, but isn't that wild though? Isn't it uh, wild? You got cats. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, if if you guys don't know, this the, the, these two gentlemen are a part of the Dota team that just won the Invitational. Uh, and before the podcast started, I was I was asking him how much how much you know how much money was won at that, and then we went into a deeper conversation. Uh, so how much was won in this one? So this was a minor, right? Mm -hmm. It's a small Dota tournament. The prize pool was only three hundred grand, which is like, you know, that's that's the thing about Dota. The prize pools are like ridiculous, right? A minor tournament is three hundred k. Major tournament is a million plus. Yeah. And the international is like, you know, it was like twenty million last year. Right. 20 million, 20, you didn't hear that, 20 million dollars for the international. I would, I would shit my pants walking up to the stage. Yeah, but that's the thing is, it's just another Dota tournament for everybody. And yeah. it's just like, you know, this last tournament that uh, the big major that Mineski won, the C team, right? They won a million dollars, right? Yeah. And that could have very well have been the international. It just, yeah. the timing wasn't right. So you want to make sure that you peak at the right time. 
this. <coughs> How, what is uh, the most that you have won in your career? Like, what, no, not the yeah, it's in a tournament. You won the major. I'll yes. start with mine. Okay, right, yeah. yeah. twenty-five thousand. So, like, as a group or individually? Individually, a hundred thousand as a group. Nice. <laughs> I mean, it's hey, your I, turn. It's all relative, man. Like, uh, I mean, I won the international, which was two thousand fifteen. I won the national. Oh, oh it's just big a, a domestic championship. Yeah, I mean, that's he's a USA. Yeah, through and through. I rub it. Um, and yeah, that was like, I think it was like seven or eight million for the team. So you guys, you know, you cut the pie in a lot of different ways. But it was a, uh, it was a nice, so you, a life changing tournament. So you, you became a millionaire off of one tournament. Yeah, that's well, crazy. I mean, no, 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 taxes. Let's not talk about taxes. <coughs> pre-tax. Yeah, yeah, pre-tax. That's. That's crazy. That's like life. And there's this one kid that's like 16, well, now 17 or 18. Yeah, so that was that's the big story about the Sumail, right? Sumail was this 15-year-old kid from Pakistan who had just moved to the U.S. with his family, and they're all living outside of Chicago yeah. in some, you know, some three-bedroom bed three bedroom apartment with like seven people. Yeah. And then he goes and wins the international that year. You know, he becomes a millionaire. He buys his, his family this, you know, four or five hundred grand house. Yeah. And... You know, live happily ever after, right? Damn. Yeah, it's and American, then, American dream. And then, and then what? He wins it again the following year, right? No, 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 no. We we went again that year. Um, he was your teammate. Yeah, he was yeah. my teammate for two years, yeah, and we went. Five, yeah, we went. And Zai, but Zai came back. To, he that was his year off. Yeah, uh, he took the year off in two thousand. Who took the year off? I did. Oh, yeah. Fine. So actually, I have a lot. I, I got to thank Zai because when Zai left, Zai actually left the team right in two thousand fifteen, yeah. which caused us to recruit Sumail to join our team. Yeah. And then we won. So thank you, Zai. How do you feel? It's like opportunity missed or a water on the bridge? That's that was over. your mail. I mean, obviously it wasn't, you know. It was weird because uh, Zai went and joined Team Secret. Yeah. And Team Secret, throughout the beginning of like spring, summer, like before the international, yeah. they looking, won everything. Good. Yeah, they somewhere. won everything. We, we got second place, they got first place. We could never beat them. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to the international and these guys lost to somebody else. We didn't even have to play them. Yeah, because like you know, realistically, we probably would have lost. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, I mean, it's it's kryptonite. Some teams can't compete against other teams just the way it is. I, I, and that's pretty apparent in Dota. I think nowadays as well, like ma team matchups, people don't really talk about it enough. I think because yeah. I think play styles actually matter a lot. A thousand percent. Uh, it's like right now, we're playing in these North American qualifiers, and these matches are a lot of times harder than you know these international tournaments we go to yeah. because yeah. you know it's structure versus wild, right? Everybody knows each other so well, yeah. so it's just a totally different game. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we, we went back, uh, I went back to the International in 2016. Once again, I had two of my teammates jump ship uh, months before. And Zai was taking his year off for school, so yeah. he hadn't really played it all that year. Yeah. But we messaged him. I'm sure Zai got hit up by a couple teams. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I was finishing up school at that point in the year. Yeah. And then I was, I was looking to join some, like, random teams, try to qualify for TI, uh, like the traditional way, play some open qualifiers and get in that way. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, EG was obviously having difficulties and then I went with them instead. Yeah, but didn't, didn't the, the, that dude win two two of them? Nah. Who won two of them? Nobody's won two. That's the thing. There's been yeah. seven internationals, not a single player has won twice. Okay, okay. Damn. Yeah. Uh, for some reason I thought that that kid won twice. No, we got we got third that okay. year, but which still. is still, you know, we won like, I don't know, like <coughs> five, six hundred grand a piece or something. Yeah. That's, that's, that's probably my biggest pool as well, or my biggest prize. Yeah. What, what is your biggest prize individually? The one, the, the one we got yeah, third. So Zai and I, we played Zai and I started playing Dota together, yeah. switched over from Heroes of New Earth, yeah. and we played our first year together in 2014, and we got third place at the International. And then next year, we were on different teams. Wait, what was the prize pool for... Okay, so what did you get for placing third in 2014? So, yeah, in 2014, I think we got mm, right around like 120K. Oh, okay. So Something it wasn't like the Mills... No, it's, no, it's changed. So, like, the first two years, it was, like, 1 million, then it was, like, 1.6, and then it was 3 million, and then TI4, it went up a lot to, like, t 8 or eight or 10 million total, yeah. and then TI5, it was, like, 16, and then it was around, around 18, TI4, now And then last year, it's 20. How? It's because around TI4, they introduced the, the compendium, right? Yeah, the compendium. Which is, like... You know this thing you buy in game. It's kind of like virtual. There's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's like in-game cosmetics, cosmetics yeah. right? And then a percentage of those sales get added to the prize pool. Yeah. And there's a uh, there's a lot of people that play Dota, and there's a lot of people willing to spend money on it. So, God bless them. Yeah, that is that, 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 There's so much. The thing is, the thing with esports, and 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 it kind of like annoys me because 
so many people are doing it right, and even the people that are doing it right could do it better. Just just developers choose not to do that, and and you can't blame them, right? It's it's their game; they can do whatever they want. But it's just like co cosmetics. Like look how look at the success that Dota has had in, in cosmetics and and their ability to give back to the community and to put on a great, amazing show. There's no better show on earth than the Dota International. There yeah. isn't. It is like the even the stage has like. It's a uh, it's a very illustrious event, right? Yeah. And that's it's earned that through reputation. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a literal show. Like you are part, you are inside of the video game, um, to to a degree. But th there's so much stuff that people can learn off of others, and they just choose not to. Like, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk Call of Duty because that's, that's fine. You know, that's where I go. But but can you imagine if just cause just a simple thing like cosmetics, just a simple thing like cosmetics would not only um, Make people want to play more because they collect. I mean, look at Fortnite. <coughs> Fortnite is killing it right now in, in 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 the cosmetics game because I wait every time to spend my money. I I am like, like what new today? I was I was at dinner. New teddy bear cosmetics. And bought. <laughs> yeah. And and sit by. Yeah. Just yeah. to play with it like three games, and then I'm like, man, I'm it playing. Be, it, bad. Might be a, it might be your lucky skin. Yeah. yeah. And but yeah, like, uh, but I'm play playing bad, so I switch back. Who's your and favorite? Then I never touch it. What do you again. use? You you guys don't play, right? I don't know the nah. I don't know the name of it, but it's like the it's, it's a female in like a blackish gray army type outfit. Do you always I play female characters in games? Uh, he does. Ye, most of the time, wouldn't you? most of the time because they're smaller. Yeah, and I'm uh, a head case. Harder so, to see, right? Yeah, yeah like in smaller hitbox. even in even in Halo, I would play as a female Spartan. That's just, a lot of people that's just would. Smart. Yeah, I play I play the gingerbread man, <laughs> you know, because he's brown. He's always angry. He's got big lips. Okay, with he, wings, because I'm an angel. Does he look like? <laughs> uh, do you ever play Time Splitters? Uh, I don't even know what that is. You lost us on that reference. No, it was like this old PS2 slash Xbox game. It was also just like a bunch of gingerbread people and. You could play as these like uh, just easy. You're you're small, one small characters. Sitting so next were, to two. They were like the no, most. No, he's not red. Yeah, he is. I'm ish. If my beard gets like, if I let the beard go, it, it starts like you know like peach fuzz brown, and then it just turns. If to we could be cousins, you're probably a ginger. Yeah. yeah, I could. I'm probably a ginger. You guys, you guys could be. I'm sitting. I'm not here. a ginger. Yeah. I'm just like I got you some red tendencies. hair. I got some you're red a day hair. walker. Sure. Yeah. Um, where were we? On that, we were talking Something about, about uh, Dota cos cosmetics, no cos <laughs> cosmetics, cosmetics, and, and, and that. Uh, and, and to wrap it all up, because I don't, I, I always talk about it and go on this rant about it. It's just that, you know, so many in esports, so many people are doing it well that they just like even tournament formats, right? Like if you, if you look at, at, at you know, some of the stuff that that's happening in Overwatch, some of the stuff that's happening in in, in League of Legends, some of the stuff that's happening in Counter Strike. Like there's so many tournament formats that are that should be the standard that people just don't follow because they want to recreate or or add on to and be you know whatever that they just like kind of ruin the, the experience um, the, the competitive experience uh, not only for the players but for the spectators as well that's something that we've been struggling with a lot in my opinion personally in dota is that we have <laughs> all of these tournaments now that are a part of this uh, they're all kind of a part of the international now because they all have these uh, Dota Regions. Pro Circuit points, okay. which help you qualify to the international. Yeah. And the international usually has like a very standard format that everybody agrees is like competitively fair, and it really does separate the better teams from the weaker ones. But a lot of these formats at these other tournaments that help you qualify to the international are experimenting with the formats and trying to recreate and trying to produce new and interesting uh, formats or like you know tournament design and. Oftentimes, the competitive integrity isn't, you know, totally fair, in my opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, imagine one day saying, you know what, we're going to, this is going to be worth four points instead of a three-pointer in basketball. But it's only going to happen every ten minutes. It's like a heating up sort of thing. You don't have that in, in, in traditional sports because it's so standardized and fair that there's no need to fix it. It's not broken, not fix it. So They still change the rules in real sports all the time, though, right? Yeah, but it's it, just... but... but but the rules that they changed from in terms of foul, even the even the, the inside um, inside area, like all that was was all added on like in, in the yeah. late '90s. But it was because of the you know the, the way that the game was being played. Now that has nothing to do with the format. It has nothing to do with with uh, you know the brackets and how the records go. So sure, that's that's the that's the only issue I have. Again, I, I agree, one thousand percent that. Yeah. We should follow traditional sports' model and business and, and the way that they build that, but there's no need to not 
reinvent and stay with it. You know, reinventing is one thing, but continue to reinvent just for the sake of reinventing is not something that's. It's. I mean, my, my biggest gripe is like, what are your motivations? And that's the thing about the internationals. The international has never been this like big, showboaty event where they're trying to you know attract sponsors and viewers and it's yeah. really just always been about hey this is a celebration of dota and we're going to bring the best teams in the world and they're going to compete for the biggest prize and somebody at the end of the day is going to be able to say that they did something great and that they are you know the best dota team in the world at that time yeah. and when you have all these other tournament organizers who are motivated by you know profits, profits. right it's a totally different ball game yeah. and those and, two and, things don't mix very well yeah and and, and and not that there's anything wrong with it. a business a business needs to make profit, but you can still make a profit and put on a good tournament if you keep the the basic principles and and and, and point of of the competition the same across all worlds. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen to that. Yeah. Rewind that. Play it back. Um, <clears throat> what do you guys have uh, going on next in terms of uh, competition? You said you have twenty nine. We got a match here in a couple hours, yeah. maybe an hour or two, maybe. When, when is your, your break? Your, you say you had like a 29-day yeah. break so or something? So we flew out here to Texas to do a boot camp for our last two qualifiers of the season. Uh, we are competing in, we actually just won the ESL Birmingham qualifier, so we're headed to England in about a month and a half, I think. Yeah. And we're currently in the middle of our China Super Major qualifier, uh, which is the biggest tournament of the year. It's got the most Dota Pro Circuit points on the line, and it has the largest prize pool outside Next, of the international yeah. I think it's how much two million million 1.5 million yeah it's early June sometime as well I think yeah so we're hoping to qualify for that we actually lost <coughs> last night to complexity zero two but then immortals the team that we beat earlier in the day they beat complexity so now everybody's kind of level again so team we got matchups. a we got a second chance yeah Good. If you guys make it to the China one, as I told you guys last night, I'm going to try to make it. Nick's going to come with me. Uh, he's never been to, to China. China. We're going to go to Shanghai. Actually, that'd be fun. It'd be, bro. I would go for like, we like went eight, with eight. like a You're a big party guy, right? Not a big party. You like if I go out of town, like, yeah. That's like the Pika and Zai and they like they like the China's, clubs, right? China? They China. said China's the best place to go out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, and you go out and dance and stuff because he's a dancer. I will, I techno, and, 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 techno clubs. And, I'll, I'll, yeah, dance. I'll dance. I'll dance. And... It's full of Asian teens. Oh, I was just about to say, don't get me started. I thought the club was you like. Tell that's what I he thought the club was too. all foreigners. I mean, there's a lot of like, it's it's weird because Shanghai, where most of the Dota events are in China, is like it's very international, right? And a lot of clubs cater to, like, getting the appropriate mix of foreigners and like regular locals. Shanghai locals. Uh, yeah. I bet the locals like the foreigners. I'm too. gonna be the only Mexican dude there. You didn't see any Mexicans there, right? <laughs> Definitely not. Oh. No, I don't think so. Well, you're looking. You just, I, I bet you there is. I one. wonder. I bet there wasn't a redhead either. Not really. There's like uh, there's Europeans. Mostly. Listen, I'm not gonna go and party because I don't do that. I'm married too, so there's no point. But <laughs> Nick, everybody likes to dance. Wait, so what's the uh, drinking age in China? <laughs> Why are you what asking kind that of a question? question is, is that, that? Uh, probably eighteen? Probably, just, probably eighteen. I'm sure. Well, I'm just wondering when he's hitting the club with the. Asian tangs yeah. is is he getting his drink on? Like I gotta know the the mood here. I'm twenty. I'm not that young, so yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's just the U.S. that's twenty one. Yeah, yeah, the the U.S. is the only place in the world yeah. that has this this sort of like and, and don't give me I mean get me started on that. People, when I was when I was seven, eight, nine, ten, I used to go to the corner store and buy forty ounce. Uh, tecates or caguamas as we call them that uh, and, br and, and bring four of them back to the house for my uncles and cousins but they will sell them to me literally sell an eight year old four 40 ounce bottles not asking where it's going America There's, yeah like crazy they'll they'll send a young man off to war with with weapons uh, but they will oh. not allow them to to drink, man. Come on, man. Well, we're, we're, not we're, just, get... we're just talking about dancing and yeah, techno. We're talking about Asian. No, we're not just <laughs> not this, this, is, this is where we make our stand, everybody. <laughs> let the young man you drink. First, the optic let, the podcast. Young, let the young men drink. Uh, we're 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 it, begins. It, it is very strange to me, though, because I mean, obviously, I didn't grow up here, so I'm not really sure what the actual reasons, like interpret interpretation of drinking age and whatever how it works when you're growing up. But I mean, in Sweden, it's like age is 18, unofficially, anywhere between 13, you know, 18. 
I'm sure it works similar. What was the, what was the first time you you had a drink? What's don't the worry, first time we, you like, worry, really had a drink? Don't worry, your parents don't watch this. Thir- Thirteen, right? Yeah. Thirteen. You? Damn. But that was mostly that was mostly because of uh, the party scene. Because of events, no. Cause of, yeah. Because of the technology. Okay. Yeah. Tell that. Tell, uh, that. tell that. Tell that. Tell that. Can I tell this? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So I'm at I'm at my first land ever. Dreamhack, <laughs> Winter Sweden, 2011. I'm 19 2011? years old. 2011. He's you 19 until those. Yeah. We're you know this is like and esports after party so we're just in like the ho- we're in somebody's hotel room right with a couple bottles of alcohol yeah and it's just like you know there's like one girl and yeah. like you know oh those were the six, best times. 16 dudes yeah those and were the best. uh over there in the corners there's 13 year old zai drinking vodka and i'm just like oh like I, looking back like in, in the moment yeah. i didn't really think about it but looking yeah. back i was like i was at a party with a 13 year old yeah. and he was drinking like only what? in esports what's well, what's and one girl me? And, and yeah, I mean that was. There might not have been a girl, honestly. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of who it might Probably have been. I don't think, What's I don't crazy th- is that since 2011, he hasn't added like those two girls there. No, next year's the three girls, or four girls. There's yeah, always been. Think, like, there's only always been this <laughs> one <might> imaginary <laughs> girl, <laughs> which may or may have not been there. Uh, those are the good days. The good. Da- yeah, <laughs> those nah, were. No, nah, the days are still good, right? Esports. Being a prof- there's no better time to be a professional esports player than now, right? I hate that the truth. Yeah. Or you got the money. Or or, or, or a social media influencer, oh, content yes. creator. Of course. True. No, th- these are facts though. I'm, no, not, I'm right. not just. Oh yeah. yeah, it's the best time to it, be what? a lot of things. What, 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 yeah, no, this is the best time to be to to it's not the best time to be have, alive. This is this yeah. is the only time in the history <laughs> of the world that people are allowed to make money having like an extreme amount of fun. You don't have to uh, go off and work for somebody. You don't have to go off and go to college. You don't have to do like do all these, you know, traditional things that you do because the internet exists. And in the internet, you can be not only whoever you want, but you can build a, a, a business, a self-sustainable business that, that that will allow you to live life and enjoy yeah. life. That's the coolest thing about being a content creator, being a live streamer, being a YouTuber is like all you have to do is have fun and show people that you're having fun and they're gonna enjoy it. That's like whenever I live stream, I know that <coughs> as long as I'm having fun, my yeah. viewers are having fun. 100%. And I'm putting on a good stream. Yeah. It's kind of like Dota's hard to stream for us as well. That's like... You don't have fun? I mean, you it's have... It's a serious thing. You have yeah. fun, but at the same time, whenever you're playing Dota, it's not for the purpose of having fun. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know... It's serious? Yeah. It's kind of just... You just play because you have to play. Yeah. I like, imagine all the time you guys actually put into the game, like you want to... Focus. Yeah. Try to get better. Yeah. So on the way up, uh, when we went to go get the water out of your 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 uh, your training center or your room, Nick said, "What are they doing there?" You know, you know, like they fucking. Well, practice. obviously they play, but I mean it's pretty simple. You know, we do the same thing anywhere we are, whether it's our bedroom. You guys it's... play there every day. He said y'all play there from like one to eight every day. I was I mean, like, we're, I don't we're just, believe We're it. here just for like a little bit, right? <clears throat> but like we, we, we we're, I think we're coming here at like 10 a.m. and then we leave at like, you know, eight or 9 p.m. See? Um, but it's- Every know, day? Just, I mean, the days that we've been here, yeah. They're professionals, Nick. I mean, we don't do anything else. Counter-Strike, like, upstairs, the same thing. League of Legends, upstairs, the same thing. How often are they I mean, here, what though? Else, I what guess else do I'm, you want to do? I guess I'm looking at it like you guys- Live it, live in the area, and then you come here like every single morning. How often are you actually here, practicing at? Let's say you lived out of here, okay, and you weren't traveling. How, like, you would be here from those same times? He j- literally just said that no matter yeah, where they're at, unless they're I made, f- unless yeah. I made plans, like if I was going on a fishing trip, or if yeah. I was going snowboarding, like, yeah. or if I was going to visit my family or visit a friend. Like, other than that, like my every day is, or I guess our every day is just, you know, minimum like 10 hours on our computer. Mastering your craft. Yeah. And and this is something that culturally, and when I say culturally, I'm talking about the PC <coughs> race and the console race is, is in, incredibly, incredibly different. Every game is so different. I've yeah. noticed that when my time as like the CEO of EG, yeah. and, like being, you know, having a hands-on and like talking and experiencing all these different players How and wild teams, is it? Yeah. Everybody has their own cultures, whether it's CSGO, Dota, Call of Duty, <sighs> Overwatch. It's wild to me because, um, and it was, a, it was the biggest culture shock when we when we you know stepped into Counter Strike because they would be there training. There was no if answer, but everybody was sitting in their at their desks from one till it was done. Every day there was they they had a lunch break at three and they were there. Call of Duty, <coughs> Halo, 
Uh, Halo, actually, our old Halo team was very, very disciplined, and they and they did that. But uh, that's probably like the only Halo team, though. Yeah, it's not did like you ever a, have that a sort of Halo discipline? culture thing. No. I would. Hmm. In BTH, I'm how... trying to. Well, <laughs> I'm trying just, to see if I want to say this or if I'm like allowed to. Here in the optic, it's safe. Probably man. It's not. just us, man. Yeah, it's just no, us. No, I mean, man. probably not. If it's probably not. If you're even... Well, it, it was in 2008, 2000. Okay, so you weren't an optic. Go ahead. Okay, so I wasn't an optic. So before, like, during, like, Halo 3, I would smoke before a lot of our practices. Yeah. I was high for almost every practice on marijuana. Nothing. Oh, yeah. Well, what, crack? I don't know. There's weirdos Matt, out there. I don't think crack was invented until... It was... But, like, I, I know what you mean. back in 2009, almost, ten, almost a decade ago, that's how... That's how shit was ran. Yeah. Just hit a little. <laughs> and you feel like it. Hit a little something, get on Halo. Next thing you know, you're a national <laughs> champ. <laughs> you were living the life back yeah. then. Huh? Oh, shit. That's so funny. And and how weird Just is it? How weird is it that in this day and age, we still have to watch our mouths when talking about marijuana? I Holy know. It, I, feel, I feel like I hate this word. Guys, nice, careful. But cringe. This podcast might take a turn. We don't want to go there. Right? Yeah. Let's, let's talk right. about legalization. And no. <laughs> no, no, no. I want, to, I want to go back to talking about esports and stuff. Yeah, I hate the fact that I have to even, like, I don't have to, but it's just e- even bringing up that I smoked. So long ago. It's like, yeah. I mean, back then, like, there was so many less esports <clears throat> pros and so many less people were enabled to do it professional yeah, yeah. right and nowadays it's huge... like it's very realistic if you wanted to like you could become an esports pro and you can make a living off of it and you could say hey mom and dad there's you know thousands of people doing this for a living and i want to be one of them and they can yeah. be like okay that makes sense um but now that like anybody can do it the competition is so high and yeah, that's man. why like we have to play all the time and we have to be serious we have to be dedicated. Twenty million dollars on the line, yeah. Of exactly, course. and it's hard. Our performance is everything because you know you talk about the call, the, the Counter Strike guys. Like, let's just say one of them, you know, wasn't there all the time and practicing and stuff. And then, what are his teammates going to say? Yeah. You know, maybe when they lose that next tournament, who are they going to say? Oh, you know, he's not really giving it his all. Yeah. So let's let's get yeah, rid of nobody, him. Yeah, let's no. bring in that new kid who all he does is play. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's bring in that seventeen-year-old who doesn't think about anything except for this video game. You know, he thinks about it all day. He has dreams about it. Let's do that. It's crazy because when you are like 17 and even you were like 13 competing. And, done, yeah. and then Life was simpler. Dr- just, yeah, he'd compete right. in tournaments, drink vodka with one girl in a hotel room. And that was so uh, and that, simple. Life yeah, was so point, simple. I was, not, I was not talking girls when I was 13. Yeah, true. I was just, yeah, someone, exactly. someone had a bottle. Yeah, even, not even, yeah. not even no, girls. We're not calling you an alcoholic. No, but that's like, those are like <laughs> but, our glory days of gaming. Remember, yeah. remember when, like, for me it was like 16, 17. You don't even, you age. didn't think about playing. You just played. All I thought about was like, when can I get on the computer yeah. next? When can I play this game? And then when I was at school, I'd be like, trying to think like I'd be like taking notes right yeah. about, like how to be better at the game yeah or I'd just be like sitting there like theory crafting all day to like go home and practice yeah because I just wanted to I wanted to be the best yeah I remember <laughs> I remember one of my pro friends told me that this was he competed and this was like 2007 2008 but <laughs> he said he vividly remembers running home from the bus to play. Yeah. Because that's how much he wanted to play. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Bro, I, and it, it seems like almost unbelievable, like a movie, but like he said he genuinely ran from the bus home just to like play faster. And it's like, that's how much you like really. That, that was me and Call of Duty loved, too, man. Yeah, like, that sounds not, totally reasonable. My <laughs> life was not it's like. Good it, exercise. It, <laughs> and, and as a 26 year old man with a full time job, uh, a rent that needed to be paid, car payments that needed to be done, like uh, a, 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 all the more reason to rush home. All the, yeah, n- nobody was in the way. Jude, <laughs> Jude would leave like at seven in the morning uh, one weekend to go to her mom's or whatever, and then she would come back like at noon, and then she would leave again, go shopping. I was there from seven to like two in the morning, just playing Call of Duty, all Call of Duty two over and over and over and over again. When I wasn't there, I was drawing the maps and then I was drawing graffiti around the maps. And I, was like, <laughs> I literally, like, that's all I thought about. And I think, I think um, the, the most painful thing to me in this world will always be the fact that I was never gonna be able to 
represent Optic on the main stage. <laughs> and that's it. What? <laughs> I don't know why it's funny to me. Yeah, it's fucked up that they're laughing at my at, 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 at my at my uh at my shortcoming. Um <laughs> it's gonna haunt him for life. Yeah, I've never, never yeah, yeah, think about that. I, I, I did win I did win a, a a three versus three uh tournament uh once, but I never competed on, on an MLG event or that and that will always be something that I wish I wish I had the skill to to like do. Maybe Fortnite's your game. Not, it, the tech, I can tell you right now, it is not. My pinky doesn't allow me to shift the, properly. It's I can't run. I can't crouch. What? Yeah. You can't because even I, hit shift? No, I do. When I can shift, I hit it on the side like this, though. <laughs> because if I do this, it gets stuck sometime. And, like, you just want to roast me today. No, I don't know why. But, but this, goes, this goes to everybody else out there that, that is that I, I, have, I have had a very, very successful esports career not being a professional player. My my ability to recognize very early on that I was not gonna ever gonna be as good as uh, the top thirty second player or thirty second Halo player in the world. What does that mean? I don't know. That's fucked up. Yeah, you, you top, point. You, top you, thirty hey, second. I, I want to replay on that. Champion. Yeah, he was trying to. Respect. Have bro, you won a you, you, championship? Bro, this guy was going like know. this. All right, just yeah. Like he that. was saying like this because you said a top thirty two. 30 but you didn't get to the 32. Oh, okay. Anyway, um, but I recognize really early on, and this is this goes out for every, even if you're a, a, a professional right now, and I talk about this any single time I'm, I'm at an event and I'm talking to people, like, how do I, you know, how do I do that? The number one thing is, like, realize very, like, er, as soon as possible your capabilities. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Because if I had, if I would have said, no, <laughs> one day I'm going to be a pro and then just continue to try to do that, my life would not be what it is right now. And and I've had a very very successful uh, esports career because I identified very early on that even if I'm never gonna be able to represent Optic on the main stage as a gladiator for the flag of my house, I can still be a part of it somehow. And or was, on my side, realize when your time is up, when you can't compete with these. That's what he's saying, right? The he realized that his career as a competitor. Was. Well, he didn't have one. Yeah, but say, I wouldn't call just, it a career. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, Nick, you're digging deep. I'm not gonna lie. There's like different levels speed. of a career. He okay. was a, he was in the growing phase, and I'm then he saying, realized that we're not growing anymore. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like <laughs> this is like a roast session on the yeah. X, but I'm saying like he realized like there's a lot of people that need to realize they don't have what it takes. Yeah. And then. <laughs> <laughs> Give up on your dreams, people. You're wasting your time. <laughs> but then there's people like me who had to realize they no longer have what it takes and to just either and to just give it up. Where do you think you went wrong? When did I, you... I think I just I think it's just, just getting ex- older. Just I'm just expiration getting expiration worse. Date? Yeah. Like literally I think as I'm getting older 26. I'm just getting worse. Twenty six Nick Collier, twenty twenty six. 26. Um you're super young. Yeah, but Again, back to, we're all saying the same thing. The, the sooner you realize, like, your path in esports or your love for esports doesn't stop just because you don't have, just because God didn't give you what it gave these gentlemen. And I got to say, as a person that has experienced life living amongst professional players, <clears throat> I'm jealous. I am. I wish I, was, I, I, wish, I wish I was a professional gamer. I do wish that I was better at, at Call of Duty. I do. But again, you know, can't can't hate what I've you know what I've done. He, Nick, I'll tell you what, bud. Had I not realized, okay, my you know where I was on the totem pole and where I was in my pos- my position in the space, we wouldn't be fucking sitting here. Where the fuck would you be? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I could be better. Could be worse. That's these are facts. You never know. You never know. Yeah, that's another simulation. That yeah, is on this parallel. Go, Bring yeah. it back to the simulation theory. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of uh, individual choice and free thought happening here. Yeah, so I, I always ask this to people. Do you believe in aliens? I don't know if I believe in, like, you know, the, the green aliens. Yeah. But I definitely believe that there's... Intelligence in another... Or just, like, something. I, I, it's pretty... Uh, in my opinion, it's... Well, my opinion. I don't know shit. But I believe that it's pretty unlikely that there doesn't exist anything at all. So... Peter? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the same board. I'm, I'm open-minded. Okay, now let me, uh, let, let's get a little bit deeper into it. 
do you believe there's other life, there's the difference between intelligent life form and just life form in general? <coughs> You're talking about like plants? Sure. I mean, Organisms. I mean, plants are alive, right? Yes. I don't consider them necessarily intelligent in the way, you know, we define intelligence. But what if they're more intelligent than us and they just communicate at a higher frequency? Is there any kind of organism on I mean, any I'm, other planet? I'm not, you know, in our solar system? There doesn't have to be any showboating, you know? They, yeah. can be, they can be better than us. We can be better than them. It doesn't matter. Do we know of another living organism? What's up? Do we know of another living organism? Like what? Like a fish? Like, like on Pluto, is there a, a plant? Or, uh, I mean, you might want to go to NASA.com or something, uh, NASA.gov, right? I don't right? think so, right? Because they're looking like, right now they're looking at... Rookie. No, I'm kidding. They're, uh, looking, they're, they're looking at Mars for water. Isn't yeah. that what they're doing? Like yeah. The, the, the so they say they found some. <clears throat> we don't know of any other organism besides Earth. Yeah, I don't think so. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. But, but there, there has to be. There's the, no way. I'm pretty sure they've, like, found or they've seen with telescopes, like, other Earth, other Earths. Yeah, well, I got with it. water. I, I, and I so. think they're trying to identify like planets that have similar makeups yeah. as, as Earth does, right? I'm yeah. sure there's plenty of Earths out there. But well, look, the fact that we haven't truly <clears throat> explored every single corner of our own planet, like just goes to say that that could be alien. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna you're gonna find something deep down there that you've never seen before. It can be identified as alien because we haven't identified it as something. It's a living organism. Could be intelligent. Could not. But yeah. I personally think that yes, 100 percent we're not the only species in this world which then brings into the question of religion you know where are we? <laughs> <laughs> what? How, what's, how's the time going here man? Yeah, we're good listen that's that's what the opted podcast is uh, you know when, when we first started doing this it was it was about hey what was the first game you ever played and then we talked about our history and da, 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 da. Yeah. and and it's good to have people like you here who have never been a part of the podcast because you know the 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 culturally the amount of money that's that's being played on on, on on your stuff the way that you guys practice is like is different to what he experienced uh and it's definitely different to what they have heard or experienced a lot of them because they watched us from call of duty you know what i'm saying so that, that's why i like it but never like it started as a gaming thing but it's it was more about you know sure four dudes shooting the shit yeah you know, you guys know. I feel country, like the, i feel like the console know. scene and even like csgo to some extent there's they're so much more about like appearance yeah. And like how they, how cool they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like the same thing with like skateboarding, <laughs> yep. right? Or like snowboarding or whatever. Yep. Like as much as those things are about being incredibly talented, it's also insanely political. And it's like you gotta, you gotta look the look in order to like be that person, right? Yeah. That's why you see every <clears throat> Call of Duty pro with Yeezys on. Yeah, they're all hype beasts, right? A lot of them are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I stepped out of line. No, no, Excuse no, no. Me. I, I, Excuse I, I, me. I'm, no, no. I'm a, I, 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 uh, I embrace. We all like nice things. I embrace it. Yeah, these are undefeated ultra boosts. They just dropped. So is it not? Is it not like that mm -hmm. in Dota? These are Nikes, right? I got the yes. swish. That's that's all I know. All are, right. are you a skater, snowboarder, dude? I snowboard, and I I can ride a skateboard. I wouldn't call myself a skater. Okay, I, I was. But just, I like I like the. I, I like saying dude. I like watching it. Yeah, yeah. dude. I like I use the word dude all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. What do you do aside from? Well, what's your second passion? Outside of gaming, um, probably just like I don't know, music. Music? Do you play it or just listen? No, I just I listen a lot, and people don't like my music taste, but I like my music. Taste. What is what is? Oh, well, mostly like techno. Yeah, mostly techno. Really? Mostly house. Uh, I like house music. Have you ever heard of Chicago House? Yeah, of course. Okay, I got <laughs> I got a dope ass mixed mixtape called I used to listen Hoochie to Burger. Hoochie Burger. I used yeah. to listen to a ton of Chicago's. Cool. And uh, what's his name? Like Frankie Knuckles and yeah, yeah, yeah. all this stuff. What other type of house music is there? Oh, I thought there was just house it's, music. It's, it's, it's like rap. You know, there's 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 mumble rap. There's mumble there's... rap, traditional hip hop. There's existentialism hip hop. Zai has very eccentric tastes. <laughs> I mean, like uh, you couldn't, I could not tell you Zai's music taste. You no, have to I mean, experience it. I don't it. really have. I don't. Really th I don't think I have like a distinct taste because I listen to a lot of stuff. Like I go into a bunch of different. Like there's Chicago house. And then there's like uh, I don't know, I just listen to a bunch of different stuff. So there's never really one single. Yeah, thing. he says this, but if you asked anybody else, what's what kind of music does I listen to? They'd be like, oh, it's you know, it's kind of just Zai music. Yeah, but it's also like if if you talk if you start talking about Chicago or if you start talking about a band, you're like, I probably listen to it at some point. Yeah, sure. Which is kind of what the idea is, I think, for me. 
So your escapism is music. That's where. That's yeah, where I just listen to a lot of it. I like talking about it too. How how uh, how weird is it to you? They felt if I was to tell you that I don't <laughs> listen to music. The only time I listen to music is maybe sometimes when I'm showering. Aside from that, if I'm in my Drawing. car, if I'm in my car, I'm listening to podcasts or not no music at all. That's fine. So, but it's you know, weird. That's, Actually, that is it. you, it's not remember, fine. Who was it? I think Proofy once on a road trip. He was like, <laughs> "Hex, do you listen to music?" Or he's like, "Do you like music or something like that?" And then Hitch obviously started laughing because he laughs at everything. But do you, what? What do you do on the? I mean, s- snowboard is your thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, of course. Like, I think music is a huge part of what like we experience because we spend so much time like on the computer, yeah. just like playing games, and like the music help breaks up the. You can. Yeah. How how can you listen to music and play a game? Footsteps. Yeah, that's not, well, that's that's not the thing in Dota. Yeah. yeah, like Dota is so much like you like a lot of like uh, a while ago like Chinese pros. Yeah, they're they're used to like playing in like land cafes. Yeah, and they wouldn't even use microphones. Like they would just have like one earbud in, and then they would just yell, and that's how they would communicate. So when you yeah. go into like those soundproof booths, some of them like they just didn't even wear headsets, yeah. and they would just yell at each other. Because sounds really aren't that important in Dota. They're, so. they're like they can be maybe a little important, but like you never really take cues off of sounds. Yeah. yeah. No, and and. and FPS is super important. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Nick, what do you do for fun? You make music. What else? Um, I, yeah, I dabbled into making music. I was, honestly, a lot of my time, my free time is spent listening to like weird type of stuff, like weird philosophical type of. Uh, are you, stuff. Are you in a cult? <laughs> no. Um, but, like, have you ever heard of Alan Watts? No. Um, but I, I listen to a lot of, like, weird stuff and learn about different stuff like meditation yeah. or different types of, like, like Buddhism and um, stuff like that. Yeah, like, I see, I see it. it. It's I weird, mean, I've experienced that so. at the house. Like, I'd walk in and this guy's, like, sitting, like, laying down with his Namaste. feet like, like this. Yeah, like, literally just listening to some fucking voice telling him, you know, like, breathe. It'd be like, like a this. guided meditation. Yeah. I'd like, do that sometimes. Yeah, you're like, now sometimes you're without the it. waterfall. Yeah, yeah. basically. Right, before we get into that, we're going to end it in, in, in one last thing. I'm going to ask you guys a question, then you guys, uh, you tell me. If you weren't doing this, what do you think that you'd be doing? Sai. I have this one dream that I think might be dead, because I don't think they exist anymore. <coughs> yeah. I would really like to live and work in a lighthouse. In what the hell? Yeah. yeah. What is? What do they do? They just watch boats. You know, one of those lighthouses. You just, you just sit up there. Yeah. Uh huh. You have your own little like space. Yeah. Up top, and then you're like in this isolated place. Yeah. And then you just headphones in, just fucking. You just look at the ocean. Jamming out. You look at the boats come in. Yeah. And then. Do you guide? Are Are you the guiding? Person? I mean, they used to be. I don't think they. I don't think they exist anymore because I think everything's probably automated yeah. at this point. But you used to just look at the boats, and then this boat's coming in here, go to this pier, and stuff like this. I think that might have been the most dear thing I've ever heard. What about an air traffic controller, like an airport? Nah, I hate airports. I don't think I, I could ever. Yeah, you like the calmness like, of the sea? That's yeah. dope, man. Uh, I would have never ever. Yeah, guessed right. That. <laughs> <laughs> what about Nick? Could you? Because uh, it changes every time I ask. That's why I'm asking you again. Um. Do you want me to tell you what it was last time? Yeah, what was it last time? Uh, music. You were you were in the studio. Oh uh, yeah, studio. I would be a producer. Um, I mean, honestly, that's probably still it. But I would honestly like to be not a monk, but I would like to, <laughs> I would like to just visit visit like that kind of culture. Yeah. And like kind of just live. get lost for like. Yeah. You know, like go to Tibet, th- throw my phone away, did you watch and the, get lost in the seven woods. Years did you watch the uh, the Netflix? There's a thing on Netflix like the Wild, <clears throat> Wild Wild Men or Wild Country or something. It's about like that cult in the 70s. Yeah, no. they moved from India. No, and they I'm set not up in a cult. No, the, I'm, it's, I mean it's not it's really a, a cult. They were labeled as a cult, but like every religion is a cult, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but they like relocated to Oregon, and then they like set up the city like in the middle of nowhere, and they like turn this middle of nowhere into this like huge city and they like I don't know it's like they started like poisoning the water and like and then M. Like Shyamalan made a video, a movie about it yeah you know what I'm talking about I do yeah Maybe you, you should watch it you'd like it right a TV yeah. show it's called Wild, it's Wild Country Wild, Wild Country. Country TV show or movie it's a, it's a Netflix it's, it's like, like a, a docu- six, like a six episode documentary okay. yeah it's really good 
Super good. Yeah. I say that, but I watched like 15 minutes of the first episode, but I don't know what it was. Yeah. Um, I got through what, it. it what would good. you be doing if you weren't? I think I'd be working for a newspaper. I wanted to like, when I was living in Fort Wayne, I went to school for journalism and communications, and I kind of wanted to like move to Chicago and start writing for a paper there. Yeah. Would your focus be in esports or just anything? No, I, I don't, I, maybe sports. I was really into sports. Um, but personally, like, I'd rather just do like a, I mean, the dream would be to have like your own, like your own article, right? Where you could just write about whatever you wanted to write Column. about. Column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Dear PPD. Dear Diary. Dear Diary. Dear PPD, my husband ignores me. What do I do? Yeah, I'm very, uh, as an esports professional, I feel like I am very well credited to give life advice. So yeah, if anybody has course. any questions, Hit me up on the uh, yeah, no, on the down, Twitter. down below. Just yeah, yeah or Twitter. What's uh, the Twitter's will be in the description below. Uh, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably still be working at some insurance company or some banking company at a bank or something. And That's trying to be a Call of Duty professional. No, no. I, I again, I, I, uh, I know, I know what I am and where my strengths are, and I make sure that, you know, I stay, I stay in my lane, and sometimes I swerve a little bit to see if I, have, if I can. If I can merge, I'm merging. If not, then I'm not. But yeah, I think uh, I think I'd be in corporate America still, you know, which is like the complete opposite way. Where I think you'd, you'd see me. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this episode of the podcast, boys. You guys have anything else to say? Thanks for watching. I know you, you see us in the thumbnail. You're like, who are these two guys? Yeah. So I appreciate you tuning in and giving us. No, appreciate the, you the, being the there. thumbnail is gonna be like, this guy won a million dollars mm -hmm. in and then one my face. tournament. No, you gotta make it. You Hi. won't. You won't believe how much this guy won. Yeah, you won't it? believe how much he made in uh, one yeah. turn. We'll click bait him in there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please remember to leave without leaving a like. Um, if you guys have any questions that you guys would like us to answer on the next podcast, leave them down below. Don't get cheeky. Leave something good. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>